Right, hi everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Imanshu and we are continuing understanding Apex through our Salesforce Developer Masterclass. This is use case 25, which says merge a list of tasks assigned to two different queues and return the merged list. Meaning, you'll be given two different list of tasks which are assigned to two different queues or let's say we'll query it out and then you need to do what you need to do is you need to merge them into one collection and return that as the result. Okay. Let's take a look at this use case on VS Code. For those of you who can go ahead and get started on their own, pause the video here, try it out, comment below the entire code that you've written based on your understanding, of course. And then for those of you who want to follow along, let's get started. I'll create a new Apex class. I'll call it Apex use case 25. And I'll just go ahead and remove the constructor. I don't need it. I'll say public static void return merged list all right and let's take the queue names here as the input queue name one queue name two all right that's what will take the input so we'll find the records that are assigned to those queues and then we'll merge it okay that's a better approach now here merge spelling is wrong i'll just set it up and the return type should be what it should be a collection it should be the merged list which would basically be a list of cases case or task task or let's choose cases okay it will be easier for us to handle cases all right i believe we created a case and assign it to one of the queues right in one of our previous use cases the sla queue so we can use some things on the and those on those lines all right so now i need to return merged list now what is this merged list this is nothing but a list of case All right, all the definition template setup, the code stub is written. Now we need to actually write our code. Before doing this, let's go to Salesforce. Let's take a look at all the cases currently that we have in the system. One of them is assigned to SLA queue. Let's assign, let's create one more queue in the system. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and say queues. View in classic and I'll create a new queue and I'll call it escalation queue okay and again this will also be for the case object this is very important that you choose the right s object here and i'll assign myself to the queue all right save so two queues are created let me quickly take a look at this queue pick up its record id which is the queue id and let's modify the ownership of some of the cases okay so i'll just query owner id here execute and let's just modify the queue ID for some of them. Save rows. So I've just modified three records. Okay. And now if I, if you go ahead and check the owner name for each case, you will notice some of them are assigned to Himanshu, some to SLA queue and some to the escalation queue. All right. Now, what do we want to do? We'll pick up this name. All right. The escalation queue and the SLA queue. That is what will be fed to the method and what the method needs to do is identify all the cases that are assigned to those queues and merge them. Okay. So because we are talking about merging, I'll write two separate queries. Okay. This can be done in one, but I'll write two separate queries just for this use case. Okay. So I'll just say escalation records is equal to, and I'll put another query SLA records. What should be my query? The query will be same. Select ID from case where owner ID equals Q name. Now will this work? It won't because or Q name would be a string, whereas owner ID would be the record ID of the Q. So before doing this, we actually need to query the group. Correct. What will I do here? I'll say select ID from group. Remember we talked about this where type is equal to Q and name equals Q name one. 
all right just for the sake of this particular use case i'm writing multiple queries because even this can be written in one okay i can just use the or condition but i need to show you the merging scenarios i'm writing two different queries okay so don't uh, come at me saying that himanshu why have you written four queries just for one use case it could be optimized i know it could be optimized this is just for this use case okay so this is the first info q info and this is the q2 info all right and now what i can do is i'll say where owner id is equal to q1 info of 0 dot id and similarly i can take the second query also and i can say q in q name 2 info of 0 dot id why of 0 because this q would have one record i'll just put a limit one here it, it will find it obviously we can put some null checks but again just for the sake of it that's okay all right so we'll put the q1 q2 and then escalation records and sla records all right so these are the four queries that we have written to basically identify what q is it get the q id and then query the case records based on that owner id owner id would basically be the q id right the q would be the owner as we saw on the developer console see the owner id is the q id all right one better way of doing it all right if you don't want to actually write this here and you don't want to use the owner id what could you have done you could have just used the owner dot name here okay so that is one optimization we would prefer doing that will save us two queries okay so we'll prefer doing that so this is q name one and i'll say owner name owner dot name is equal to q name q name two all right and this has to be bound by the colon variable so that the variable binding can happen and now i can get rid of these two queries perfect all right we didn't need those extra queries because instead of owner id i am checking owner dot name all right so i have two lists with me right now these lists will be mutually exclusive because a record cannot be owned by multiple queues at a time correct so that way we are sorted that there would be no such case would, which would be part of this list as well as this list make sense right so now what can we do we have these two queues what we can simply do is we can say merge list dot add and instead of adding we can use a method called add all and what does add all do it takes list as a parameter and it basically adds all the records that are part of this list to the parent list okay and we'll do the same thing for sla records and that's all the two queues add all the merge list will have the record which will contain all the records or all the cases coming from these two lists let's try to deploy it deployed fine okay so what i'll do is i'll just try to debug it and see what does it return let's go to anonymous window and let's say apex use case 25 dot return merged list and i basically want to return the list for two types of queues the first one is sla queue the name should be proper and the second one should be the escalation queue okay let's go ahead and say execute it will open the log and let's take a look at what is it returning so there's no debug only because i did not print it out so i'll have to say system dot debug and that should give me the return information let's say execute one more time and let's take a look at the debug only logs for my new log so you see i see that one two three four four cases four cases have been returned and which is exactly true because three of them are as part of the escalation queue and one of them is for the SLA queue. All right. So it worked out fine. Now, one more thing I would like to add before closing this use case is what if you had a scenario wherein there could be a scenario like not this scenario, but there could be a scenario wherein you have two lists in hand with some records and there is a chance that a record can be common in both. Right. So maybe your filter criteria has evaluated that record to be part of list one as well as list two. In that case, how do you give the merged list? It should not contain duplicates. And when it should not contain duplicates, what do you do? You simply create a set variable. All right. So instead of creating merged list as a list variable, I can simply create a set variable. Set. 
all right and now what i can do i can use merge list dot add all and i can still pass my list to that merge list set variable even this will work fine and this return type should be a set if i try to deploy this first of all let's see if it gets deployed or not line number seven and eight should compile fine which they have so instead of using a list what i did i created a set so that my final output does not contain a duplicate it does not contain the same record twice because one record record three could be a part of this list and this list so when i say add all here and add all here record three will be added twice in the list so better to create a set out of it to avoid duplicates make sense cool so that was all from this particular use case I will see in the I'll see you in the next one bye